Zero Accounting Software 2023 Bank Feeds Matching Bank Feeds to Cash Based Sales Form. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Here first, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you. Because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and use ourselves. Here we have a Western Digital WD Elements 20 terabyte USB 3.0 desktop external hard drive we use as part of our backup system, noting that if you lower the number of terabytes of storage, the price will lower dramatically as well. When you're thinking about a backup system, you're usually thinking about an online system or an external hard drive system like this or ideally some combination between the two giving you some redundancy. You can also work directly from an external hard drive like this, but there are some drawbacks to doing that. One being, if you use this as your primary drive you're working from, it's no longer a backup drive and you're going to need a backup system, possibly another external hard drive and or some kind of cloud backup system. And if you're working on something that takes up a lot of short term memory, a lot of RAM as you're working on it, such as video editing, the external hard drive can slow up the system. So you might want to come up with some kind of system where you download the project you're working on to your computer, to your C drive, or possibly to a solid state drive, which is a much more expensive uh, external hard drive as you do the work. Once the work is done, then save the project to an external hard drive such as this. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. We are in our custom zero home page going into the company file set up in a prior presentation the bank feed file duplicating some tabs as we do every time we're going to be right clicking on the tab up top so we can duplicate it and then we'll right click on the tab up top again and duplicate it again back to the tab to the middle accounting drop down going into the balance sheet report tabbing to the right Accounting drop down again, going into the income statement or the profit and loss report. Well, that got kind of intense. Slow it down. We're going to go back to the balance sheet. Uh, the date looks good. We're on the range. Looks good here. Let's go to the income statement. Changing the range to 2022. So we're on drop down 2022 January to December of 2022 and update it. All right, let's go to the first tab where our bank feeds are at. Accounting drop down. We're on the bank account information, which we've uploaded in a prior presentation. We're focused on our checking account, the top one up top. Drop down. We want the account transactions. So that's how I usually get there, at least. And then I'm going to go on over to the uh, reconciliations. So we're looking at deposits again. This time we want to think about deposits that come through like a cash based system, possibly like a cash register type of situation. So let me see if I can find my deposit here. So this is the one that we will be using. Now, we've been trying to come up with systems where we're constructing our books from the bank feeds so that we can automate things as much as possible. But now looking at those items that throw a wrench into the system, making things a little bit more complex. Let's go over to our flow chart on this one. And this is a QuickBooks desktop flow chart, but we're just looking at the flow of the forms, which is basically the same for any kind of accounting system. We're on the customer or sales cycle, and we're in a system now, remember that we're kind of driven by the industry that we are in. So the easiest industry would be like if we had gig work or something, we could just wait till the deposit clears the banks, their electronic transfers, we could just add them to uh, our income statements as they come through. But if we're at like a point of sale system, like at a cash register situation, 
then we're still on a cash-based system. We're not tracking accounts receivable. However, we would like to generally record the transactions at that point of sale because that gives us an internal control to allow us to basically tie out how much we have received and tie that out to our various forms of payments, whether that be cash or credit cards or, or that kind of thing. So normally we're gonna wanna enter the sales receipts and then you can imagine a system where we have the sales receipts here and we basically try to tie out the bank feeds directly to the sales receipts in a similar way as we did uh, with the uh, create an invoice where we had the bank feeds tie out to the invoice. So if you could do that, even if you were to do that, even if that was possible, that would mean that when you make the sales receipts, you could just deposit the sales receipts at that point directly into the checking account. And then basically uh, you, could, you could match out your bank feeds to what cleared on uh, the checking account. However, oftentimes it's gonna be a bit more of a problem because if you're getting paid at a cash register with different forms of payment, you're either getting cash or you're gonna be getting uh, credit card payments or something like that which means there's a financial institution in the middle of the transaction. So if it were cash, for example, you might be getting multiple cash receipts from the sales receipts. And then when you deposit the sales receipts into the bank, you're gonna be depositing them as one lump sum. Therefore, what's gonna be seen on the bank statement is just gonna be one lump sum. And if you deposit each sales transaction into our system one at a time, it's gonna be difficult to reconcile. So what we typically have to do oftentimes is make that, is make that uh, clearing account possibly so that when we make the sales, we record them into a clearing account and then we take them out of the clearing account and put them into the checking account in the same format as will be seen on, on the bank feeds. And that's also a system, as we talked about in a prior presentation, that might help us to deal with fees and that kind of stuff uh, as well. So we can come up with a system that it goes into the clearing account. Remember that if you're matching anything and you have to match multiple things to tie out to a deposit, to, to, to tie out what's in your system to a deposit form, then you probably don't have the most efficient system. The reconciliation should be easy. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say that we have uh, this this 1015, I'm gonna go back, we're gonna go backwards and imagine what happened first. We enter sales at like a cash register, multiple of them that will tie out to this number. So I'm gonna go up top and say, okay, and that happened on sometime in October or September. So let's say, all right, drop down. Let's say we're at a cash register, receive money for them. We're getting paid. Now here's where the choice comes in. Do we wanna put it directly into the checking account now if we do if we if we put it directly into the checking account we basically are just entering a deposit form and we can connect the the deposit form to the bank feeds using the matching system however again it will only work if we're, we're every deposit that we make is going to show up on the bank feeds for that dollar amount which won't be the case if we're using cash or if we're using credit cards or something like that so we set up a clearing account in a prior presentation, which is just a cash account that we didn't connect to the bank feeds as a clearing account. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first put it into that account and I'll say next, let's say this is gonna be for customer, customer number five, let's say, customer number five. And we gotta bring this back to September of 2023. So let's bring it on back, bring it on back to September where the grass is green and the girls are, pr I don't know, I got Guns N' Roses in my head, some band, some song, I don't know what, just get back, focus, focus. We're gonna say $500 and the count is gonna be sales. And there it is. So this is gonna be uh, a, a money form so it's gonna be increasing, not the checking account, but the clearing account by 500. And then the other side is gonna go into the uh, <laughs> the sales account. I almost lost it there. Let's save and add another. Save and can I have another? 
So uh, save in another. And let's say this is for customer number uh, six. And we'll bring it on back. Take me back to the paradise city where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. September, let's say this happened September 1st as well. And I have multiple talents, um, as you can tell, singing, uh, musical uh, acuity. Uh, one. 515.25 let's do this one so this one and this is going to go into the sales account as well and so this one the 500 and the 5 uh 1525 will add up to the uh 1000 and 1525 is that right yeah that should work so this is also going to be increasing uh the clearing account by the 51525 and then the sales account so let's go ahead and save that we'll check it out so if i go back on uh over to the balance sheet i can balance this sheet on my pinky finger i've balanced the sheet okay so we're going to say this is going to go into the clearing account there's the five there's the 1015.25 so here we have uh the 1015.25 uh, uh, so, so, which are the two transactions that we made of the 500 and, and the 515.25. Now, if I made these two transactions directly into the checking account, then you can imagine that we might be able to kind of tie it out because I could go over here and say, uh, okay, let, let's actually do that. Just, well, no, let, let me just show you. If I go back on over here, and I go into my uh, checking account, accounting dropdown, and bank accounts. And if we go into the drop and down, and we go into the account transactions again, and we go into the reconcile, so that we can, and then we find that uh, 1,015. There it is. Now, if I de if I deposit those two directly into the checking account, it probably wouldn't have found them even though they add up to 1015.25. But I could go to the match and I would have been able to see those transactions here. I can't see them now because I deposited them into the clearing account. But if I deposited them directly into the checking account, I could go in here and try to match them off. So you can imagine a system where you can try to do that, but usually that that's not uh, the system that you usually want. Usually you're going to think, how can I come up with an accounting system? So by the time I get into the reconcile process over here, it's going to be as easy as possible. And that's why the clearing account might come into play because you might have other things that are involved too, like, like fees uh, that can be involved. So, so that means I'm going to put it into the clearing account here as we did. And then I'm going to transfer it from the clearing account to the checking account in the same grouping as I expect to be seen on the bank feeds. And you have to you have to figure out how you're going to do that depending on your system and why uh, and how you're getting paid, right? If you're getting if you if you're getting uh, cash payments, then the the amount that's going to be deposited into your uh, bank will be dependent on at the end of the night you're going to physically deposit the money into the checking account, and so you'll know what that deposit is. And that's why then you can take it out of the clearing account in the same grouping as you put in the bank. If you have some intermediary credit card company, PayPal, Stripes, then you got to figure out how do those systems work and how are they grouping my payments together so that you can put them, you can take them out of the clearing account and deposit them into your checking account. And if they also have fees involved in some way, then you can see how you can integrate the fees and possibly the clearing account can help you to make sure that you take into account the fees as you transfer them from the clearing account possibly into the checking account, right? So now that they, they will be in the checking account in the same format as we'll show on the bank statements so that you can reconcile. Now I'm gonna do this with a transfer form, transferring from here to here. Remember that like the transfer form's a little confusing because I just wanna point out that I could use three forms to do this. I could say, 
if I want to take money out of here and tr put it into here, uh, I could do that with a deposit form, but a deposit form will look correct over here. So you might actually use that to receive money form, but the deposit form will also be shown here as a decrease to a checking account. Now this is just a clearing account, so maybe it's not a big deal, but that still looks a little funny. You could use a, a check form or a spend money form, which would take money out of the clearing account, which would look correct here, but then you would have a check form in here that would be increasing the account, which would look funny. And if you wanted to sort, use filtering options. If I went in here and tried to filter my uh, accounts using my filtering tools, then I couldn't really filter by the source as easily because now I, if I, I would have you know transactions going the wrong way <laughs> because normally the receive money forms should be increasing and the spend money forms should be decreasing not the other way around so but that's why you have a transfer form because the transfer form could be an increase or a decrease uh type of transaction it doesn't look funny on either side all right that's the point let's go to the first tab and let's do a transfer form we're going to go up top and say transformer form transfer form more than beats the uh, meets the eye. I always say beats the eye, but more than beats the eye, which doesn't make you have to, it meets the eye, meets the eye, more than beats the eye, more than meets the eye. Accounting, it's going into the checking account. All right, it's going from the from the cash clearing account into the checking account, and this is happening uh, back in 2022. This happened. Asked back in 2022, let's say uh, 17 Feb or something, and let's say the amount is 1015.25, and let's make the transfer. Let's make the transfer. Transformation has happened. That's the Transformer song, by the way, in case people don't know. Transformers. So the so now you've got uh the the clearing account is gone and we put that amount into the checking account because the clearing account cleared out that's what happens with clearing accounts they go up they go back down uh once they the the purpose has been served as the service of this purpose has been has been uh so here's the 1015.25 there's our transfer so notice the transfer form doesn't look funny it doesn't look like it's a, a, a spend money form that's an, that's like an increase or anything, right? That's the point. So then let's go back and see now if the bank feeds should recognize now because we have the same dollar amount. So now the bank feeds should be easy. That's the whole point here. The bank feed recognition should be easy. So I'm gonna go to the banking account, adding, not an adding, what are you doing? You're gonna confuse, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get, notices for that people are going to tell me that i confused them manage manage account and then account transactions okay and then we're going to go into the reconcile and let's find and let's see if that match happens it see if it recognizes that's not the one it recognized that one that's not what we're looking for. here it is boom recognized it because now we put the dollar amount in the same dollar amount. And so the reconciliation should be easy. So you wanna have a system uh, where the reconciliation is like this, right? That the system could recognize it because the dollar amount is coming in in the proper dollar amount. And this reconciliation system should be as easy as clicking off, boom. That didn't record anything new, by the way, because we had to record it all on our side. So you might be thinking, what is this reconciliation thing doing for me in this case? Well, it's helping us to reconcile with the bank reconciliations. It's helping us, that's what it's doing. It's not actually creating the financial statements in this case, because we have to do more of a full service type of system, which isn't a bad thing. It just happens to be what we have to do. We can't rely on the bank all the time because we have this accrual component that took place and, and that and it threw a wrench into the system. So bank feeds don't solve all the problems. All your problems won't be solved with the bank feeds. Just like, you know, I try, you know, you could try bank feeds to solve all your problems, liquor, drugs, or something, right? None of it, none of it sought love. What it doesn't solve all of your problems. You still have, uh, you still have to do, you know, it could help out a little bit. 
And let's look at the uh, let's look at the trial balance now. I'm going to go to the accounting drop down. Let's look at our reports and see what the trial balance looks like. Typing in trial balance and uh, there and so there we have it. So we've been just constructing this as we go. Uh, look at this. Look at this thing. Look what we've made. It's amazing. So the balance sheet stops at the equity. And then we've been making the income statement. The debits and the credits are in balance. That says the double entry accounting system is working. It's the same thing from a double entry accounting standpoint as going to the balance sheet and saying, hey, my assets equal my liabilities and my equity. How does the income statement fit into this whole picture on the balance sheet? If, if the assets equal liabilities and equity is the whole thing because the income statement is squished into this one number, current year earnings, 8,624.79, which is the bottom line of the income statement. Uh, if you update it, I have to update it. Now it's the bottom line of the 8,624.79 uh, here. This being our timing statement telling us how we did over the year period, which is not bad, I must say. Uh, you know, I'm not, we're not getting rich or anything, but um, it's it's still respectable. I feel like that's legitimate, legitimate, a job well done. Uh, but uh, and over here, you can see that on the equity side, we only, we don't have that current number in the equity. It stops at retained earnings. So the current year earnings are broken out and so that's why we can put the balance sheet on top of the income statement without all the subtotals and use the debits and credits, which is actually more efficient than the double entry accounting system represented in the accounting equation, which is on the balance sheet assets equal liabilities plus equity and then breaking out the income statement, which is the current year portion in a separate report of the profit and loss or income statement.